to cheer everybody's mood. Um, Robin, I know you're not on the negotiating committee of the current strike going on now, but you were on the negotiating committee of the previous strike in 88. No, no, 2007. 2007, sorry, sorry. The yeah. first strike was 88. That was the one, yes. That was that was another long one. Yes. Um, I lost the movie with Judy Toll. Judy and I wrote a Groundlings movie. Uh, that Steve White, former Groundley, was an executive at New World. And by the time the strike was over, he got the boot and that movie got the boot. So but um, so but tell us, I, I, what is that like being on a negotiating committee for something as immense and important as a union contract? It's really a lot of responsibility. It's a lot of responsibility. I. Um, I had been. I keep talking about being fired, but I was fired off a project and I was really hopping mad. And they were having like Patrick Verone and David Young and other people were having these meetings with showrunners to talk about the issues and sort of prime people for the fact that there might be a strike. And I was, went off at this little gathering. There were, by little, there were maybe 12 people there. And I was like, I'm mad as hell and I'm not going to take it anymore in these fucking companies and blah, Oops. blah. What's the, uh, you got it, Mark? Oh, oh so sorry. So sorry. No worries. No worries. No worries. Um, Dr. D has it. Good. So these horrible companies. And um, I get a call the next day saying, would you run for the board of di directors? <laughs> And I'd never run for anything before in my life, but a guy named Tom Shulman called me and Tom had written Dead Poet Society and what about Bob? And I really looked up to him and I couldn't believe that this guy that I admired so much was calling to ask me to run for the board. And then there were other people on the board like um, Phil Robinson who wrote Field of Dreams and Ron Bass who wrote Rain Man and um, Robert King who went on to create The Good Wife. And it was just people I looked up to and admire. Right. And so I decided to run and there was a ticket. So I was on the ticket and it was a popular ticket. So I was pretty sure that I would win. Uh -huh. and then they asked me to be on the negotiating committee. You know, it because I've been in the Writers Guild for so long and I'm a woman, I've gotten a lot of stuff because people needed a woman. And there weren't a lot of women that they could, they wanted to deal with. So one of the reasons I think I was asked to be on the negotiating committee, I was on the board, but I was also a woman. And again, a lot of people that I admired and I felt that it was important. Um, subsequently, I was on the board and stopped doing it because unless it was a really important issue, I wasn't, didn't want to drive cross town to the, <laughs> the building, the Writers Guild building. But um, I just learned so much about negotiating and that you have to give stuff up and what you do and don't say. And a lot of the time is just spent sitting around because there's a lot of smaller meetings, like the bigger meetings are business affairs for all the companies. So maybe there's like 50 people on their side and maybe 20 people on our side and you go into a room and it's very formalized. Right. Can I interrupt for one second? I want to get back to that because I'm, I'm visualizing that as being, you know, writers and then these business people who are just, yeah. they're just about numbers. They don't care. My question is, and I'm sure the answer is yes, but I'd love to hear it is do the writers have actuaries as well? I know the they're all running numbers at the companies. Right, oh, right. It's going to cost. Do the writers have their own people running numbers? Like this is what we're going to lose, but this is what we're going to gain, and and we need. I don't know. I don't know. I don't have any idea. Well, I, I just... don't. Have any idea. I'm not. You know, I know a lot of those people, but I'm not an insider anymore. Um, it it's it's interesting and i'm a union girl you know 
I believe in the collective, even though I also hate people, but I hate people, but I believe in the collective. And, um, and I, you know, there were people who came before me who gave up a lot of stuff so that we would have residuals. And I want to leave the business in shape for the people who are coming behind me so that they have a career that they have a job they can make a living off of. And let me just go back to that image for one second. So you're in this room, which I'm looking, I'm visualizing like from the movie network, but you've got how many people on their side and how many on your side? 50 to about 30 or maybe 60 to 30. There's a lot more of them and it's very formalized. Like, if you're in a room, maybe Chris Kaiser would speak or Ellen Stutzman, who's our head negotiator, and then Carol Lombardini, their head negotiator would speak and everybody makes presentations. And then you, what they call sidebars. So then there's sidebars and, or you're just sitting around, like you make a presentation, they make a you know presentation, then everybody goes off and talks privately. This is if you're negotiating. Right, you which are not even a lot of time not yeah. negotiating. Right, so that would be the sitting around time. When you're sitting around and like Phil Robinson is there, are you? I would. Yeah. I would be finding myself just asking him questions like, "How did this scene take place? How did this go?" You know, like I became good friends with Andrew Bergman. Wow. Andrew Bergman, the in-laws and just watched uh, again two weeks ago was honeymoon in Vegas. And, you know, just a great writer, somebody that I had admired and he became my buddy. And, you know, Terry George, who wrote in the name of the father, Susanna Grant, who wrote Aaron Brockovich. Yeah. I had them all sign. I have a picket sign somewhere that they all signed. Um, but yeah, you sit around and talk. I remember one day, People started sharing their, um, well, it was iTunes, you know, but your your lit, your music. So sure. people were sort of mocking each other's music choices <laughs> and, wow. you know, kind of getting to know each other's music choices. And um, I was on another negotiating committee with Billy Ray, who's an amazing guy, and Chip Johannesson and, and Chris Kaiser, I think, were the co-chairs. Um, and I feel like we're in really good hands. I just feel like, unfortunately, we're negotiating with sociopaths. And I, I, I really, I, I got to say, and I was saying this because, you know, I play golf with some rich guys up here and they're also asking me, like, how's the strike going? How's the strike? And I just say there there was a time in this country when rich, like really, really rich people, they sort of went to their own private island or they lived, they belonged to clubs that nobody even heard of, you know. That, but now there's this my yacht versus your yacht. They flaunt this wealth that they obviously make on the backs of workers, writers being one of those workers. And and then they wonder, I just I say to people like, yeah, this strike has to happen because these people are making too much money on the backs of workers that's just my they're, if they're claiming that they're not making enough of a profit to pay us why do they are they paying these guys that much money right. i would do it for 10 million dollars i just saw it i just saw uh zaslov the guy the discovery guy yeah i was reading about the layoffs at at the tcm channel turner classic movies which my wife and i watch all the time we just love it and there are all these layoffs where the executives who are running it are cutting themselves. They're cutting their salaries. They're laying people off. They're butchering the entire network because they get a directive from up above saying you have to cut 60 percent of your budget or something, which right. is crazy. Meanwhile, up above is giving themselves raises. And that just seems so obscene, obscene, obscene that they do this. What, and then cry poor to a union negotiation. It just The only thing that I will say in David Zaslov's defense is he came up with Max. And what a genius to take HBO out of the name of H HBO Max. Right. You know, 
Like who doesn't call it HBO? It's, it's idiot. What an idiot. Well, Twitter becoming X might might have uh, usurped him. Elon it's Musk. Not mutually exclusive. They can both be idiots. They go into a room and pitch on words that have X in them. And Elon, <laughs> up, well, I can beat it. I got one letter for my word, X. Uh, we're going to take another break, a third break. I'm talking to Robin Schiff, an old friend and, and fellow groundling from way back when. We could do another few hours on this. Um, Ro, writer of Romy and Michelle's High School Reunion, among other things, check her out. Um, you know, you don't have any social media, right? You don't. I, I'm on Facebook, but I don't really I do it. Uh, unlike I, some I, I literally don't accept friends unless I know who they are. Right. Um, no, I think that's a, a smart move. Anyway, Al, we'll be right back for more of this. You're listening to It's Radio with TV's Tim Stack. 